Hello and welcome to the second session of our Biomedical Engineering Workshop Series here at SimScale. Today we will continue our journey through the world of biomedical engineering and how sim engineering simulation can be applied there and talk about stand design. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Milad. I'm a product marketing manager at SimScale. And I actually really can feel your pain because 10 years ago, I also had to get started with simulation. And I really know that it's a very interesting field of work, but also there are a lot of things around it, which seems to be quite complex. And our aim is uh, uh, to, to help you to get started with engineering simulation based on biomedical engineering applications. And I've studied mechanical engineering with a major in um, process engineering as well as biomedical engineering. And before I joined SimScale, I've worked in mode, mainly in motorsport industry and motorsport aerodynamics. I worked for several car manufacturing race teams, including Formula One and World Rally Championship. And yes, uh, I hope to I hope you will enjoy our today's presentation. All right. First of all, I would like to make sure that everybody can hear me loud and clearly. And as you know, we are using a software called GoToWebinar to uh, stream the broadcast of this session. And in the case you can hear me loud and clearly, please click the raise your hand button, which you will find in the GoToWebinar control panel to show me that everything is working fine. All right. I see some hands and seems like everything is working perfect. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at our today's agenda. By the way, in the case you have questions, you can ask them all the time using our uh, question window. Just enter the question, I will try to answer them on the fly or latest during our Q&A. Okay, but back to the agenda. So first of all, we will talk a little bit about stand design and um, so we will talk about uh, what stands actually are uh, and when you need to use them. After that, uh, I will show you a simulation project which is um, showing how a stand is expanding. We'll take a look at the simulation, uh, talk about, let's say, the most important settings and, and models we want to use. And then uh, we will summarize everything uh, I will show you some key learnings and then I will show you your homework assignment for this week and for sure we have again time for a Q&A session at the end. All right, so first things first, let's get started. Uh, so the uh, topic of our today's session uh, is stand design. But what does a stand actually? And in order to be able to, to answer this question correctly, first of all, we need to talk a little bit about the anatomy of your cardiovascular system. So the cardiovascular system is basic, contains everything in your body which is involved by supplying blood to origins or wherever. So all of the arteries together and the veins are called the cardiovascular system. And it's in the end a kind of pipeline system in your body which is applying nutrition, oxygen, etc. to all the tissue and the cells. And now let's um, take a look at our theory. And on this slide you can see on the left side how uh, uh, a theory is looking like. And basically a theory is made of three parts. The inner part is called the tunica intimia. And this is basically a very thin layer of, of elastic cells and uh, it's called basically the endotel, it's here. And we also have elastic membrane here. And this area or this part of the artery is very, very smooth and is in direct contact with your blood. Then in the middle we have the so-called tunica media. Uh, and this tunica media is basically a little bit thicker layer of muscle cells. This is quite important because um, at, at some point it's necessary for the body to take control um, over the uh, mass flow through the arteries. For example, in the case you hurt yourself and you're using blood. And then it's necessary to uh, artificially 
narrow the diameter of the vessel and uh, this can be achieved um, by tangenting this muscle cells and this is a, yes, a very important mechanism in your body which is needed to make sure you won't lose too many blood in the case you have hurt yourself and here we have the so-called tunica externa which is an elastic membrane around the actual artery which is protecting it um, and so on and there is a kind of disease or a disease called art arteriosclerosis um, you might heard about it especially all the people suffer under it and in the end this is means that fat and calcium depositions are generated inside your blood vessel inside your artery and here you can see it so just imagine this um, you have this two layers here the tunica intima and the tunica media which is made of muscle and then between um, there is a pos potential deposition of calcium which is called plaque and not only calcium can be deposited there but also like fat and and some other stuff and this is really a big problem because the result is that the um, effective cross-section or effective uh, diameter of your blood vessel will decrease so uh, it will narrow and also what can happen is that we have a formation of, of, of other particles which can also create really serious damage to your body just imagine you have like a spot of fat which is like on the top of your tunica intima and once this for example uh, travels further downstream it can happen that it will completely occur uh, the vessel and this is really a big problem because of two reasons first of all if you think about a vessel or a pipe system um, you might hear it or might know that basically the, the volume flow through this vessel uh, is depending on the pressure gradient and the consequences if um, the diameter decreases of, of, of my vessels I need more energy to pump all the um, or to, to pump all the blood with the same mass flow through the vessel system which means there is a high load on your heart which is a kind of mechanical pump and so on the one hand if you have arter arteriosclerosis uh, you will have higher load on your heart and it will increase the risk for, for heart failure and on the other hand even if, if your heart is, is still fine the effective mass flow in the region on the, in the near of, of the arteriosclerosis will drop and this will mean you have a, a, a decreased um, transfer of nutrition and oxygen to the cells and this is really a big problem so here you can see different states and here A is really how a healthy vessel will look like so again we have the three layers the tunica intima uh, the tunica medita and the tunica externa and here you can see like different stages of the disease and if you take a look um, for example here E at E basically the narrowing is induced uh, by on the nar F narrowing of the effective vessel diameter it is induced by uh, something which happened inside this tunica media here and this is usually fat or calcium but it's also possible that um, the blockage is just on top of the of the tunica intima like here and there are a lot of, of let's say different um, versions or, or different types of art arteriosclerosis but what they all have in common that they ha are really a, a potential um, a potential danger or potential risk to your health and therefore it's necessary to treat diseases like this and this is uh, where we should start to talk about stands so base what is a stand 
A stand is nothing more or less than a small mesh-like device made of, of metal usually and in some cases also from, from polymers. And what ex actually what this stand is used for, you will bring the stand inside a narrowed artery or, not, uh, or a, a narrowed vessel in general and then you will expand this mesh and increase massively the diameter. And as a consequence, this metal mesh will act as a support inside your vessel, keep the vessel open, and it can basically be used everywhere. So it's used in, the, uh, in, in coronary, renal, carotid, and femoral arteries, and it can even be used in, in, in basically every kind of vessel uh, or uh, inside your body. And yes, yeah, there are some risk which comes with the stand. First of all, if you implant a stand inside the vessel, you will have an increased risk of thrombosis due to increased rough contact surface. Just imagine. The biggest problem we have with blood is that um, as, as soon as blood is, is in contact, let's say, with non-organic material, or like for example a non-organic device like stand, uh, it will immediately start to get damaged. And so this is a risk which comes with stands. And another big risk is the so-called restenosis. So we're calling about stenosis when the, the vessel get narrowed. And restenosis means that after you've applied the stand, after some time, Again, there will be some some depo deposition of deposition of plaque, and this time we mean it's it's like in between um, the arms of the stands. And yes, and there's also something very special about stands. It's the way they are uh, applied and inserted into the body, um, because if you think about it. Um, there are basically two options if I want to bring something inside the vessel. One option is to open the vessel externally, which means you really need to destroy, let's say, a lot of, of healthy tissue around the vessel. And therefore, it's, it's not the way uh, we want to go. And uh, another um, technique which is used for more than 50 years is the so-called balloon implantation. And what we're doing here, here is that actually you can see it on the left side, the, the stand is added on a special device, so-called balloon catheter. And this is, as the name says, a kind of, of very thin balloon which is now inside the stand. And in this configuration, the overall diameter of the assembly is very small, maybe two or three millimeters and you can easily bring it into a body with a very small um, cut and like guide it through the vessel uh, to the to the section or to the point which you want to expand and once you have inserted the stand and you are at the right position you can start to expand this balloon and this balloon will just expand and together with the balloon also the stands get expanded and once the stand reached his, let's say, final shape, you can just uh, release the pressure from the balloon. The balloon will collapse again, and then you can like take the balloon out of the vessel, and the expanded stain remains in the coronary artery. And let's take for this. Let's take a look at following video, which shows how these uh, coronary interventions. Are made. So here you can see the narrowed artery. It's a little bit too quick, maybe. Here is the narrowed artery. Here you can see like the diameter is, is really small, and here we will have a lot of resistance. So we need a lot of, we we'll lose a lot of pressure, and also the mass flow will decrease. So what we are doing now is somewhere else, for example here, we'll add a catheter and push um, the balloon catheter with the uh, stand through the whole body until we reached 
um, the pos our final position. And once we are here, we just need to expand the balloon, which will expand the stand. The stand will stay at its uh, destination and then we can just remove the pressure from the balloon and take it out again. Yes. Let's take a look. It seems like we have some some questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Now let's talk about something very important. Here the question is: If I'm expanding the the, the balloon with uh, with the stand, the stand is also expanding. But when I uh, remove the pressure from the balloon, the stand uh, stays at his position. What's the reason? Yes, and to understand this, let's take a look at this very fundamental um, material test, which is called the um, stress uh, stress strain experiment, or maybe some of you know it as a stangle experiment, and it's used to characterize different materials. And now let's Imagine we have, uh, yeah, I'm quite sure you know this machine if you're studying engineering. And basically what this machine is doing, uh, we have two vices and inside these vices we will put and fix a probe of a sample material. And then these vices are moving away from each other, other. And the machine is recording in the end of the day the strain, so the elongation of this probe and the stress which is acting inside the probe, which can be calculated by dividing the force which is needed to move the vices through the cross-section of the probe. And if you then run this, this experiment, you will get a curve which will look like this for metal, metallic materials. And so at the beginning, the relation between stress and strain is proportional. And basically, the slope of or, or the rise of um, this part of the diagram. It's called the Young Modulus. Wait, I'm, I'm Young's Modulus. I'm quite sure you heard about it. And everything which is happening here is inside the so-called elastic material um, material law. Um, and if you think about it, you have, for example, elastic spring. It's the same effect. If you put a load on it, the length will change. And if you remove the, the load, it will go back to its initial position. But if we further increase the strain, at some point, we will reach the yield strength. And if we reach this yield strength, we are leaving this uh, elastic material properties. And we are have we have uh, the plastic material properties which are not revisable anymore and what is happening basically here is that um, I will get this kind of curve so at the beginning the stress will still increase until I have a m maximum and then it will drop and, and suddenly soon after the drop usually your material probe fades and why I'm telling you that the reason is that basically what we are doing when pumping up the stands is that we are making sure that the deformation of the stand is in the is a plastic deformation which is permanent and the a stand in the end of the day we want our expanded stand to be someone here in the near of the ultimate strength because there we already have strain hardening which the material means the material becomes a little bit, bit harder and on the other hand, it, it stays, the, sh the shape won't change anymore. And whenever it, it comes to design a stand, you need to make sure that in the, when in the final stage of the uh, balloon, of the balloon catheter, you are in this plastic material behavior. And this is basically what we want to simulate today. So we will simulate how to expand a stand with the so-called finite element analysis, which is a structural analysis. And it's a little bit different to what we what we did 
last week because last week Anna introduced you to FEA and showed you how to set up a simulation for a hip joint prosthesis. And at the hip joint prosthesis we were only considering the elastic material properties since um, yes we wanted uh, to understand how the load will distribute inside the bone during walking. Here our, our aim is a little bit different and therefore our simulation setup will also be a little bit different but first things first. Uh, so first of all here you can see on the slide stand and the first implication we can do make is that we only take a symmetrical piece cake, a, a, a piece of cake of, of the stand. So instead of simulating the whole stand we will just take such a piece and add symmetric boundary conditions here and here. And here you can see it. So as he and so this is um, yes a, a cyclic. Uh, this is a, like a cyclic part, and basically we have a symmetry here and here. On the inside, the balloon pressure is acting, and on this faces or one of these faces, we can just apply a, a symmetry in y direction. And if you think about it, this means that we are reducing our computational effort by more than 12 times. Six times because of the symmetry in uh, its cyclic direction and one time uh, because of this, two times because of the symmetry in y direction. Also something very important if, uh, which I wanted to, to talk with you about before I start to show you how to set up the simulation is the difference between first and, and second order elements. Uh, last week you also used the tet tet uh, tetrahedral measure to, to generate a computational grid of your simulation. And back then you used the so-called first order element. So what's the difference? As you know, for, for simulation we need these elements to discretize our problem. And in the end of the day the computer will only calculate the physical quantities we're interested in uh, for every node of these elements. And the difference between first and second order is both of them are tetrahedral elements if you take a look at the shape. But for the first order mesh, um, the interpolation between two nodes or the function uh, used between two of these nodes is, is a linear function. And second order there we have a quadratic function. And it means if we use the same element size, a second order element will give us much more precise uh, much more precise results. But on the other hand it will also have a little bit higher computational effort. And everywhere where you have high deformation you should use second order elements because they have much better properties in terms of modeling high deformations and plastic material behavior. And let me give you an example. Here you can see it. On the left side it's the first order mesh. On the right side it's the second order tetrahedral mesh. And the size of the elements is the same but you can see that since we're using this like second order polynomial between the nodes, um, the, the surface looks much smoother and uh, also uh, the results will also look better later. Okay, right. Now, so let's take it our look at our simulation. What do we have to do? First of all, we need to import the CAD geometry. We will upload the model and then we need to do the set simulation setup, which means we actually need to mesh our geometry. We need to select the simulation type we want to run. We need to add initial boundary conditions and material properties and finally once our simulation is finished we can take a look at the 3D simulation results and use the results to, to take design decisions and, and make our product better. Alright and therefore let's switch to the SimScale platform And this is the project and since our time is limited, uh, let's just go through the project. I will explain you what I did. And yes, so let's start. First of all, we need to 
imported geometry. In this case, the geometry is already here, and you can see this is this cake piece of our stand. And the next step is to actually generate the mesh. And as you can see, again, we choose TED dominant meshing. We actually uh, did not add any refinement. We just choose a manual uh, element size between um, 0 0.04 millimeters and 0 0.03 millimeters. And what is very important, we choose the second order elements. And they are necessary since we have this large plastic deformation. Okay, then. Yes, and I'm not going to, 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 to do a live demonstration this time, but later I will send you a step-by-step -step tutorial. And as I mentioned, the most important steps is you need to create a new project, create the mesh, and very important, do a manual tetrahedral mesh in order to have full control about element sizing and order of the elements. There are also some advanced topics which we will not talk about today. First of all, what we call cat pleading and repair. If you take a look at this, at this cat model here, you can see that it was, it's really clean and simplified. There, it's First of all, it's a solid body with one shell, so there's, there's no open edge or something like that. And yes, this is something maybe which you have to do in advance. And also here, our application engineers needed like half an hour to prepare the geometry in the CAT system. But once you have the mesh, the next step is to actually do the simulation setup. And first of all, you have to choose your analysis type. In our case, it's a static, anal static nonlinear analysis. And I'm quite sure this is a point where a lot of people ask yourself, why static? Because it's if you take a look from a physical perspective, there is a physical time inside the problem because the stand is expanding over time. And this is very important to understand. Static and dynamic for FE8 does not necessarily uh, mean that there is a physical time or not. Uh, we use static everywhere, or for every cases, where the changes are change is so slow that we can assume that the uh, uh, changes like between the time steps will be um, linear. So we have very slow change. And actually what we're doing now, we assume a nonlinear material behavior, so a plastic material behavior, but we will just increase step by step the load and this is something we'll understand if we proceed a little bit with our simulation setup. So the next thing you need to define are contacts. Anna introduced you last week to the concept of contacts. And here it's a little bit the same. There's just one difference. In this case, we need to define a contact inside one single body. And you will ask yourself, why do I need contacts? It's just one body, right? And that's the point, because if you think about it, uh, later if you have the final stand, which is not only a piece, you also have a kind of symmetry, a kind of radial symmetry. And this is what we try to model this way. So we have to find the axis, which is in y direction. We have assigned the origin. And the origin is by 0, 0, 0 here. And what we do is, in the end of this day, that we say, this is the master, this is the slave. And that is, in the end, our implementation of this uh, symmetry. The next thing we have to do is to define the material properties. And this time, since we are doing uh, have plastic deformations, we need some more material properties. So first of all, we need to choose material behavior plastic. And then we have, again, to submit Young's modulus, a Poisson ratio, and von Mises stress. But in addition, we also need to provide a stress stain diagram. So, so we really have to provide this part of the curve as a CSV file with x and y values. And yes, you can easily just upload a CSV file on your own. You can choose which interpolation you want to use, and that's it. 
And then the only thing which is missing, or which are missing, are the boundary conditions. So on the first, the one hand, we need a restriction in x-direction for one of the, for the master phases, because um, at some point we need to fix the model. Basically, it makes no difference if we fix it here or here. It just needs to be in accordance with the master and slave. So if we change, uh, change master and slave, then we also have to change um, this assignment. And another constraint boundary condition is the symmetry in y direction, which is applied here. And we need to apply a load, and this time it's here. We will just apply a pressure here because the pressure on the balloon needs to be the same pressure that is acting on the inner surface of the stand. And here, and that's very important, um, instead of a fixed value, we will again use a function, and this. Uh, and we need this to make sure that we will ramp our pressure. Right, and that's basically it. The only thing we have to define is the number of time steps. Our simulation interval is one second, which means our final pressure will be um, around um, one bar. Yes, and that's basically it. And then we can create, uh, add some uh, solution fields and start the simul actual simulation. And let's do a quick wrap up. So we have to choose the mesh, define the contacts. Contacts are very important for our, since it's a symmetrical case. Then we need to define the materials. And since we have plastic material behavior, we also need to provide the stress strain curve as a ZSV file. And finally, we have to define boundary conditions. Again, there are some things, some advanced things, uh, which we will not talk about during this workshop. First of all, the so-called advanced result control items. What does, I, what does it mean? Uh, you can compute own result fields uh, under result control. You can like add calculations for edges, area of volumes. You can like calculate the average stress inside the stand, the maximum minimum stress on the set, etc. And this can be quite useful for, for specific applications. And if you're interested in that, uh, and you want to learn more about this, you should take a look at our CFD masterclass, for example, which you will also find for free on the SimScale Academy. Right, and now let's take it our final result. So once the simulation is, is you set it up everything, you just need to start it. And for example, this simulation took 32 minutes. Here you can see the um, res uh, residuals. And don't worry, uh, it's the reason it's jumping is because it's a, it's a, a kind of a semi-transient simulation. And if you go to the post-processor, we can analyze the results. So first of all, we have the calculated the max and minimum MISA stress inside the stand. And here you can see like for one bar, the for MISA stress is approximately about 0.6 um, or it's uh, around um, 0 0.6 um, megapascal. And you can also take a look at the 3D result very easily. Might need some seconds until it's loaded, but now it's here. And now, for example, we can just like click on play. Oh, wait, I think I forgot. So let's add a wrap by vector filter, wrap everything by displacement. And now you can see how the stand is expanding. And let me jump to this time step. And in the end, you have to make sure that the plastic deformation here starts in the screen area. So this looks quite good. And you have to make sure that nothing is red. And as, 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 uh, 
less as possible is blue. And now the great thing is we can just copy the simulation and like compare different materials. Let me give you an example. So I will add now this, this case, which is the same geometry, the same boundary condition, just a different material. No, wait, here. Add result to viewer. And now we will compare both of them. Just need to transform it a little bit in that direction. Wait. Again, wrapped by vector. Now we can compare how both stands are expanding. All right, so um, ah, before I forget about it, we can also take a look inside, for sure, uh, inside the stand. For example, we can use a slice filter. To take a look inside the stand. Let me do the same with both stands and then No, you can like really compare, compare it. Yes. And you can play with other stuff like opacity. You can staff, uh, save the state, create screenshot and stuff like that. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. And now I would like to introduce you to your uh, homework for this week. Uh, by the way, uh, if you have questions, just write them into the question uh, window box. So, um, uh, your homework this week is to basically compare two types of cardiovascular stand models. And they have a little bit different geometries and also different materials. And we have again prepared a step-by-step -step tutorial which you will find here on the SimScale forum, on the SimScale workshops and then Biomedical Engineering Workshop 2018. And you will again find everything. So a kind of rough introduction to the idea of stands. You will also find the video here and the step-by-step -step tutorial, which shows you how to exactly set up this simulation. All right. Okay, and now, if there are still some questions which are unanswered, it's it's uh, your chance. Just write them to the question toolbox. But I answered a lot of questions on the in the in the uh, chat, so I can imagine that most of the questions answered so far. Oh, there is a question by 
Fyodor, uh, he, he asks, if I want to plot the formation over time step, uh, two separate simulations, can I do it in one plot? Um, yes, that is possible. You can do it directly here, for example, but it's a little bit more complex because you first of all need to using the filter to extract, um, let's say, uh, your data, for example, uh, here, and then you can like um, build up a pipeline to extract the data you need, and then you can compare it. But for generating 2D plots, we recommend to download uh, Paraview for free. It's a uh, offline version of our online post processor and there you can easily like combine several graphs. Carlos wants to know if it's possible to expand the cyclic symmetric sector reproducing the full geometry. Yes, uh, Carlos, this is also possible. It's basically just a, I would say, yeah, question of taste. So let me show you what you can do. So, for example, This is our stand section, and now we can add transform. And then, for example, we can rotate it a little bit and then build it up step by step for, um, around the y-axis. And then you need to play a little bit around to find the right um, angle and then you can like rebuild. Carl has also another question. If the stand was conforming to a curved artery, the cyclic symmetry would not apply correct. Uh, yes, Carlos, um, that's definitely true. One major simplification we made here is that we did not uh, consider the interaction between the artery wall and the stand and if you want to model this interaction you need for sure to go with the full model and also create a model for the artery walls. Um, yes, the reason why we did this simplification is that we wanted to make sure that everybody can get started very quickly with the tutorial but for sure everyone is invited to modify this tutorial and we're looking forward to your contribution and to your ideas. All right, I, it seems like I opened, uh, I answered all the remaining questions. Guys, thank you very, very much for being here with us. It was such a great pleasure to, to be your host today. And I hope to see you next week for our final session about cardiovascular blood flow simulation, which is very interesting, guys. You, you, you can't miss it. If you have questions, just reach out to me using our SimScale forum. And yes, I wish you a wonderful week and hope to see you next week. Bye.